Humanity has always bent nature to our will. And this power has transformed our societies and transformed how we live today. But what is needed is a new way of thinking, a new way of living. This trailblazing that we have left has costed us. The ecology has changed, the climate is changing. So there is a lot of things that we need to think about. We are talking to a number of companies in the Reykjanes Peninsula who are thinking about innovative, clever ways to use resources that are available in this region to make things for the future. My name is Bala Kamlakaran. This is Circular Economy in Action. This is what circular economy is about. It's basically not looking at anything that is coming out of a manufacturing process as waste, but to reuse it into other valuable things. This is how we need to build the future. This will transform how we live. And I hope everybody takes that into account when we start looking at products and services. Hi, welcome. Uh, to Futurecast, this is uh, Tagni Jonstotir yes. with Havas Orka, who is uh, the manager of the resource park, or favoritely called the mayor of the resource park. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so tell me a little bit about the history of the power plant. So a uh, sword power plant, or first power plant, was uh, commenced in uh, 1976. Um, at least the first phase of the power plant. So how many um, people live within this municipality when it started and how many people live now? In this area, it's around uh, 30,000 people. Okay. So there's a lot of people that benefit from <laughs> the power plant being there. Mm -hmm. And also the resource park because mm -hmm. it creates a lot of jobs, a mm -hmm. lot of values, mm -hmm. not exactly just to the power plant, just to the areas, because we supply a lot of resource streams. Is it same as Havas Orca, or is it something else? What What is the resource park concept? No, Hs Orca is the core of the resource park, uh, and uh, it sells resources to independent companies mm -hmm. that form the resource park. Mm -hmm. So we are the core, and mm -hmm. then we have different companies around, and um, that's how it was kind of created. All right, so we are in uh, Blue Lagoon Research Center, and I'm here with Fanar. So Fanar, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what do you do for Blue Lagoon and uh, the history of Blue Lagoon and where it all started? Yeah, so I'm the environmental and quality manager at Blue Lagoon. Uh, Blue Lagoon was funded in 1992, and but actually the lagoon itself uh, was formed in 1976 mm -hmm. when uh, the geothermal energy plant was built. Yeah. Because at that time, when they were taking up the geothermal seawater from underneath the ground, uh, part, of this, part of it was poured into the lava field, mm -hmm. uh, thinking that it would seep, seep, through. Three, seep back to the ground, sort of a circular mm -hmm. uh, system. But they were pleasantly surprised to see that the, the, uh, they were forming lagoons in the lava field. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that the geothermal seawater itself is very high in silica content. Mm -hmm. And when the geothermal seawater cools down, the, the, the silica precipitates and forms clay, mm -hmm. uh, forming the lagoons as we, as we, know, as we know it today. Yeah. yeah. Is that also the reason that the water is kind of cerulean blue? Yeah, the, the, the silica in the, in the water reflects the, 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 the light, so we, we perceive it as, as, as blue colored, sim right. similar to the blue sky, actually. Right. I mean, I've always thought that uh, the Blue Lagoon was the perfect example of the circular economy. And uh, of course, the circular economy and all the things related to circularity is now very popular. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. But uh, you guys have been living it for 30 years now. After the, the lagoons were formed, uh, you know, curious Icelanders came and wanted to see how it was to bathe in it. Mm -hmm. But soon after that, we got a lot of stories from uh, around the community talking about how it had a very healing effect on their skin, mm -hmm. specifically people with psoriasis. Okay. 
at that point, uh, Grimur Simonson, the CEO mm -hmm. and, and, and the founder of Blue Lagoon, mm -hmm. uh, who is a medical doctor, came to this area and started doing this research, seeing why is this having this effect on the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have shown over now 30 years of research that uh, it has a very beneficial effect on the on psoriasis, but also it has a very good effect on the collagen of the skin, mm -hmm. strengthening the skin barrier. And, and, and so we have uh, built up this uh, facility here uh, a spa experience as well as a skincare product line mm -hmm. so everyone in the world can actually enjoy right. uh, the benefits. Tell me a little bit about this facility, the R&D facility that you have. Uh, the last 10 years uh, the boom has been fantastic for the mm -hmm. tourism industry and thus brought a lot more people and but also it has created a lot more demand for things and other products that you're working on? We are mostly working on uh, materials coming from the geothermal seawater, which is the seawater itself. Mm -hmm. It's the salt that we produce out of the geothermal seawater, mm -hmm. the silica that we precipitate mm -hmm. from it, and then also the, the microalgae, mm -hmm. which we cultivate here at the, at the, at the uh, so, so that's the, the green thing that is uh, behind yeah. us right yeah. now, okay. This microalgae is actually quite unique uh, to this specific area. We, we don't really know the origin of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Most likely it's coming from this environment. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing is that when the lagoon formed, uh, this microalgae flourished. Mm -hmm. So it likes the 40 degree hot water. It mm -hmm. likes the, the salinity and the geothermal seawater and it loves the silica. Mm -hmm. So it it was cut, we, we we were able to extract it from the lagoons, and now we cultivate it within the the, mm -hmm. the R&D center. But we also we use the geothermal seawater. So after we precipitated the silica from the geothermal seawater, we use it to cultivate the microalgae, and we also use CO2 from the from the geothermal mm -hmm. plant to uh, nourish. The, the, the micro yeah, it's kind of like a perfect uh, circularity in motion. Yeah. You actually use the carbon dioxide that would just go out from the plant, exactly. but you're just funneling that back in yeah. to feed these microalgae. Yeah. And what is the use case for this microalgae? What can it be used for? So the microalgae is similar to any plant. It's just okay. photosynthesis. So okay. it grows, it needs CO2 to grow. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know taking it somewhere else, we take it from this natural mm -hmm. area here. Okay. And uh, this is also a part of the philosophy of Blue Lagoon that we always, every time that we are uh, designing a new experience or, or designing a new product, we always look at the resource mm -hmm. and how can we uh, use it more efficiently? How can we fully utilize these resources into our production, mm -hmm. giving, it, giving it a more value added? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sure. For, for the business. I mean, the, the microalgae itself, the, um, so once you grow it, what can it be used for? I mean, uh, yeah. the microalgae that we grow here, we are, are primarily using for our skincare products. Okay. Because recently, uh, as I told you about the, the, the psoriasis, and, but the recent results have shown that the combination of uh, silica and the microalgae has a very uh, positive effect on the on the barrier of the skin. Okay. So reducing wrinkles and smoothing, smoothing and making the skin more smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now are now producing a new product line called BL Plus, mm -hmm. which is uh, directly using these products. These okay. So for, for those uh, who have not been to Blue Lagoon, by the way, I've been many times. <laughs> I'm happy to say that my I can, skin, I can see it. I can my see my it. skin feels <laughs> much better when I uh, use the silica product. The the usage of algae and other uh, waste products out of the water to produce really high value skincare products that are used by millions of people all over the world is amazing to see. And all this points to us to pay attention to nature and see what we can learn from it and build new things from it without destroying it. <laughs>